Good morning, Guardians. The Hijabi Gamer here, and it is Friday. I cannot believe it is Friday. It is already Friday. It has been a really fast week. Despite working a ton of hours, it's been really busy, really fast, awesome week. Anyway, it is Friday, and we are back in the tower for the original Destiny, which I still think is absolutely the better Destiny. So keep in mind, this is Destiny 1, as you can see, old tower. Can't wait until they bring this back to Destiny 2. I mean, come on, come on, we need this old tower back. In addition, just the usual reminder, Xur is in the tower a lot less time in original Destiny than Destiny 2. He leaves, so right now, it is 5.30 a.m. in New Jersey. By the time I post this, it'll be 6.30 a.m. in New Jersey. Based on your time zone, making sure the microphone isn't muted, um, he is gone for me Sunday at 5 a.m. So, no, Eastern Standard Time. 5 a.m. Sunday. He's only in the tower 48 hours. Not until reset. Again, 48 hours. And the way you know if he's in the tower, he's got a mark right over there. This means that Zer is in the tower. If you do, that's the fastest way to figure it out. If you see this mark, you know he's here. If you don't see this mark, it means he's in the reef, which is surprisingly rare. Um, I went for months without him showing up in the reef, and then suddenly he appeared in the reef. So he is in the tower. He's got some okay stuff. Um, you're heading towards the Vanguard and Eris Morn. This was when Destiny was fun and the story was cool and everything was just fun. Anyway, I got Zer right over here. See, these remind me of those, um, cardboard coffee containers that, like, Dunkin' Donuts sells that they sometimes bring for meetings. But I'm pretty sure it's, like, it's got, like, fuel in them or something. Um, anyway, Zer's right over here, as you can see, Mr. Tentacle Face, and he's got some cool stuff. He's got, yes, I know, I need to make a video about Legacy Engrams. I also made a video about, about my thoughts on the Season of Plunder, and then as I was biking to work, I realized that the video is just too disjointed, and I will be making it again, because I did not like the ending of Season of Plunder, and I have a much cooler idea for ending for Season of Plunder, so I will be making a video about that later after work, and I will also... Try to remember to make a video about the legacy engrams because I know while most of them will only give you these legacy engrams, which are ridiculously overpriced, will only give you the year one weapon, which you can only use in like Crucible. Um, some of them, there's a few of them. If you get it with the legacy engram, it will drop the year, you will unlock the year, year two version as well. Suros Regime, I can tell you, is not one of them because that's what I got. I got like a year one Suros Regime. And it didn't get me the year two. So I have to make a video explaining the differences. I need to look into that. But honestly, if you want to get, if you don't have the other stuff, like, you know, any of the other stuff, don't waste your strange coins on this. If you have extra strange coins, go at it. But if you don't have them, or if you want, if you're on a goal like me to get a thousand, um, ten thousand, ten thousand, it's ten thousand now, ten thousand heavy ammo synths, um, then don't waste your strange coins. Now we got for the Titan, the Armamentarium. They probably call it something like the Arman or something when they're like, hey, bro, you get your Armin? Armamentarium. Gain an additional grenade charge. That feels kind of weak. Let me know in the comments. But just, oh, you get an additional grenade charge? That's it? That's it? I mean, it just, I would go with Frosties. Just, that just seems weak. Let me know in the comments. I don't know, Titans, do you feel like disappointed? Because I feel disappointed. I, I feel for you, Titans. This one just, <sighs> not my thing. Let me know, Titans, down in the comments below. Next, we got the Knucklehead Radar. This radar remains visible while aiming primary weapons. Honestly, I have it. I haven't used it very much. There are very few instances where radar, like chaff, which is removing the radar, isn't a big deal to me. Um, I feel like this, you know, the only time this would be of any good is in the Crucible. I think that knucklehead radar would be great in Crucible. But there are very few instances of PvE where I'm thinking, yeah, I can really use that knucklehead radar. I mean, let me know in the comments. But, like, I have it. And, um... Oh, I don't even have... Yeah, no, here it is. And it isn't even unlocked because I rarely use it. I would rather have something... There. The thing is, when it comes down to it, it's like... You can only carry, equip one exotic. 
So it's like you need to be specific and like careful on picking that. Knucklehead radar to me is not worth um, using when there's so many other better exotics than Knucklehead radar. But as I said, I feel like it could be very useful in Crucible. Let me know in the comments. Then we got Heart of the Praxic Fire for the uh, Warlock. Right, and Radiance is active, increased agility, and decreased ability cooldowns. Now that does seem pretty cool. That does seem pretty good. I I, pro I think I do have this for my Warlock, but this seems like a really good one because, you know, increased agility and decreased ability cooldowns. That seems like, let me know, uh, Warlocks, what do you think of it? But I think this is actually a decent one that, you know, I would use. Um, Comment down below. And then we have, oh boy, the um, value weapon in Destiny, aka Trespasser. The, they cannot, they, they just keep constantly dumping this weapon on us. Over and over. And it's so much so that they brought it into Destiny too. It's almost like they had such extreme overstock of Trespasser that they're like, you know what? We're going to bring it into Destiny 2 as well. My god, this gun is just like... I, I don't know. It feels like... I, I, I mean, it's just the sheer amount of times that this weapon is dumped on Zer makes it, like, even if it were a great weapon, it's like, wow, just wow. I'm so tired of Trespasser. And then they bring it into Destiny 2. It's like, okay. Really? Really. Yeah, you did it. You went that way. <laughs> Trespasser. So you got, as I said, it, it's a burst... This weapon fires bursts of bullets with deadly accuracy, which to me, it eats through ammo. Yeah, it's great. It's kind of cool, but my experience has been with it. It eats through ammo and secondary ammo at that. Um, kills is the relentless trackers and reloading a kill. Reloading after a kill causes the next burst to be longer, more powerful super burst. I just don't feel, I mean, let me know in the comments, does anybody actually like Trespasser? Because honestly, I'm just sick to death of Trespasser. It just keeps coming up. And at one point, I remember it was twice. It was here and here. I was like, wow, they really got this thing going. Anyway, next we got Hawkmoon and Carrion. And I am not a fan of him. I know a lot of other people really like Hawkmoon. And they're always like, why aren't you using Hawkmoon? I use Ace of Spades because I like the fact that... Precision kills move one round from your uh, from your ammo reserves into the magazine. And I am very good with precision kills with the Ace of Spades. So when I use the Ace of Spades, I rarely have to reload. So that's why I use Ace of Spades. Um, I could just pop off enemies with the Ace of Spades, headshot them. That's why I use it. Now, Hawkmoon with Carrion. I have Hawkmoon, as you can see. Carrion is not the ornament I like. This is Carrion. This one right here. So that's the ornament you're getting. You can just dismantle if you don't like it. Personally, I like Moonglow. That's Moonglow. But you're getting Carrion. Now, for me, Hawk Moon is like a gamble. Okay? You get luck in the chamber. One random bullet in the magazine causes considerable bonus damage. Now, the magazine is 13 bullets. So one out of the 13. Then, after you unlock it fully, you get two more random bullets in your magazine deal considerable bonus damage. That means three bullets out of the 13 do additional damage. Now, for ease of math, we'll go with 12, okay? Because three times four is 12, right? So we go with 12. That means you have a 25% chance of getting one of those three bullets. Less, less than a 25% chance because it's actually a magazine of 13. But we'll go with, we'll be generous, 25% chance. That's why it's like, so your bonus for Hawkmoon is a 25% chance of getting a more powerful bullet. That's why I'm not a big fan of Hawkmoon. To me, it's just like a total gamble where all of a sudden, in the middle of just shooting Hawkmoon, one of the bullets you shoot will happen to do more damage. Big whoop. That's why, I mean, let me know down in the comments. That's my feeling about Hawkmoon. I'm not a really big fan of Hawkmoon. I like hand cannons, but I prefer Ace of Spades. Um, I've, as I said, you can see it's fully unlocked because everyone talks so highly of Hawkmoon. So I'm like, I had to use it and figure it out. And I just just didn't feel very remarkable to me. Like Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades, I mean, I could keep going with Ace of Spades and not reload for a while because I'm just getting precision kill after precision kill after precision kill. So everyone's like, why are you using Ace of Spades? Like, yeah, because given my gameplay style, I get a huge bonus out of using Ace of Spades. Anyway, the other weapon we get, got up, is Truth. 
Now, um, truth. Wait, what was the more ornament that comes with truth? Heart of cold. All right. Truth to me. I don't know. I feel like truth. Everyone talks highly of truth. I felt looked down by truth. Um, truth. First off, you get the ornament heart of gold, which is this. That's just. That reminds me of something from the Orican, from Warframe. The Orican are really big on the gold. This looks so Warframey. This looks so Warframey. Wow, this looks something like right out of Warframe and the Orican. Yeah. Uh, what does prototype look like? Eh, it's okay. With, even without it. Now, truth. Void damage. You got grenades and horseshoes. Rockets from this weapon will detonate early based on proximity. And then you got prototype truth seeker. Rounds fired from this weapon seek their targets aggressively. So, I got the impression that this thing will aim. And it, depending on the weapon, the, the enemy. Because I remember doing... Norusk, servant of, uh, not Norusk, um, yeah, I think it's Norusk, the, the Taken Cabal, and he would jump, and the, the rocket would miss him, so I'm like, wait a minute, this is supposed to be some fancy-ass rocket launcher, with great, uh, with great, with great seeking, and, you know, target find, and kept missing him, so that's why I kind of was like, ugh, I'm just so, just, I don't know. I did have it a fully unlocked one, so this one I think I I think I have it on another character. And I got too lazy, so I just reclaimed it. But I don't know. I felt kind of disappointed by Truth. It could be just I'm not being fair to Truth, and I need to reuse it some more. But um, yeah, Truth. Um, I also tend not to use exotic heavy weapons simply because I would rather be. It, you get more bullets for primary, so I'd rather take advantage of that. If I'm going to be using an exotic, I want to use it as much as possible. So I tend to favor primary exotics and sometimes secondary exotics because Telesto is awesome. I will not deny it. I love Telesto. Um, let me know in the comments, is the Destiny 2 Telesto better? I'm not even sure if I have it. <sighs> yeah, I got to finish the season with Destiny 2. I just... I, like I said, I will go into it. I saw the cutscene, and it was just like, this is what we spent the season preparing, do, working on, and it's like just like, okay, that's underwhelming. Okay, I will make a video about it because I don't want to spoil Destiny Two in original Destiny, but I will make a video because wow, it was just so disappointing. It's just like what this this is what the whole season was about. Anyway, then you got the usual curios, blah, 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 S exotic shards, which yeah, I got a ton of those at this point. Oh, I got to give that to, what's her name? Oh, and the trick to dealing with these, since I'm going to be logging off right now. The trick is, because you can't dismantle them. What you do is, you use it, and then you log out. If you don't want to use it, like if you don't want to run around with a pumpkin head on, which I, I don't want to run around with a pumpkin, he pumpkin head on. Come on, I just, I really don't at this point. All you do is you use it and then you log out. And then when you log back in again, it'll be gone. I mean, you can't log in immediately. If you log in immediately, it's probably going to still be working. I don't know. But I will tend to do that. Or I will switch characters to a character I don't plan on playing. Um, use the cosmetic on that character, then switch back again. Because it's just like you can't even dismantle them. So they take up so much space in your inventory and you can't even dismantle them, and you get them out of every one of those, those treasure boxes. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I hope to see you around the tower. Things get better in Destiny 2.